Yeah, good afternoon to you all. Uh, the subject I'm going to talk to you about uh, today, it has already been covered by one of my industry colleagues. So uh, some, of the, some of the things that I'm going to talk about probably is going to be slightly repetitive. But uh, I'm going to compensate that for, by giving certain perspectives which I have faced personally. And I'm going to tell certain stories like Prem wanted me to. Yeah, so I'm starting with this. Uh, I think all of you are familiar with this particular thing. If you don't know where you're going, uh, any road will take you there. This is in the context of our clients and a lot of our clients are in this place. Most of our clients don't know where they are going and they are hoping and praying that things will work out and that is where we as advisors can, can come in. Why advisory fees? So I'm, I'm just going to uh, break this up into two parts. I'm going to answer the why part briefly. I don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to have about 12, 13 minutes. So the why portion I'm going to, going to address and then I'm going to address how portion. So why advisory fees? Advisory is an opportunity. I mean, a lot of people are threatened by advisory. A lot of people tend to think that you cannot collect a fees uh, from a client. So I, I beg to differ there. We have been in advisory since 2004 and I have always been collecting a fee. Currently, we are a fee only practice. We have no other uh, source of income and we only earn by fees. So I can assure you that collecting a fee is working in the country. So I'm going to tell the story of Arvind who came to us. So this Arvind, this person, this is an actual person. Arvind came to us with 20 years of experience in a corporate. So now he was at a crossroads in the sense that he has worked for a corporate, he's earning extremely well. Uh, he has done a lot of investments in fixed deposits and in, uh, insurance and in mutual funds and stuff like that. But the one thing that he wanted to know is that he's starting up on his own. And he wanted to know whether whatever he is having today is going to work for him if he does not earn a single rupee in future. So, I mean, that's, that's a kind of a dramatic thing that he wanted to understand. But yeah, but there is no one, there, there was absolutely no one who could answer that question. So he came with a maybe three and a half, four crore corpus. He came to us, his bankers were not able to address that. Uh, Various distributors were not able to address that because they were all operating in silos. So now he came to us for this particular bit of advice. We sat with him, we understood what his motivations were, what his business model was, what is he planning to do, what is the gestation period and uh, how, how he is planning to go ahead and uh, earn an income in the new business. And assuming a zero income in the business, what we found out, that, found out was he will be able to make, he, he will be able to he will be able to live to the end of life without any problem. So when, when we did this whole plan and exercise, this entire exercise, it became very clear and it was a clear uh, solution which we gave to Arvind and he was extremely happy with it and we had charged about 60, 70,000 for that and he was more than happy to pay that fee. So the why part, why should we be in advisory? I mean, uh, we are operating across asset classes, we are operating across uh, segments. So it keeps us on the toes. I mean, we are, we are always on the cutting edge and uh, we, we tend to uh, earn respect because of what we do. The other thing is, ha, huh, this is the other part. So uh, there, there has been a lot of, uh, say, turbulence in the industry since uh, 2009. And uh, there has been, you can say, a pressure on, on earnings as far as the advisors are concerned. Uh, the front end loads were uh, gone, now they are talking about bringing down the TER. Essentially, uh, the advisory revenue is hostage to say somebody else's, uh, 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 how could I say, somebody else's bringing down the TER or in some way they are controlling you. Whereas in the case of an advisory, you decide how much you charge. So you may say, okay, you, it's very easy to say you decide how much you charge, but cl do clients really pay? So I'm coming to that next. The future is moving there. So why should you be in advisory? It's because worldwide, whether you like it or not, we, that is the future. I mean, we are moving to advice. So in, in various ways, you, it's not that you people are not giving advice. You people are giving advice. And today you are remunerated through commissions. And uh, potentially in future, as 
the advice, as the commission revenue comes down, advisory revenue can kick in and that is the opportunity that is clearly there for you. So whether you like it or not, robots cannot affect you, nothing can affect you. If you really want to be in advice, the future is there and you can actually move there. Now I am coming to six points which I want to talk about how you can actually charge a fee. So these are, uh, I mean there is no six point formula or a 60 point formula that I have. I have just picked up uh, six of them because uh, Prem has given me only 12-13 minutes to talk about this. So we, uh, the most important thing is there is a huge amount of value which, uh, which a client derives through an advisor. I am going to tell you the story of Bhavani. See Bhavani is a widow and she came to us after one and a half years after her ha husband has, had passed. What happened in Bhavani's case was that uh, her husband was managing everything for the family and uh, he pretty much was in control. One, one fine day he was no more and she was a homemaker and suddenly she did not know what to do, there was no earning, the earning stopped. Fortunately for her, the company in which her husband was working on compassionate grounds also gave her a job. But what she was earning was only 25,000. But she, fortunately, she had a fair amount of assets. Her husband was astute, he had accumulated a fair amount of assets and uh, her family was wealthy. So they had a lot of uh, real estate assets. But the problem in her case was that she was in turmoil. Though there was a lot of money, she did not know what to do with that. I mean, she, I mean, she is so uh, flustered with everything that uh, when a mutual fund statement comes, uh, she, she looks at it and uh, she is terrified with it and then she puts it away. She, she is not really financially, uh, you can say, clued in at all. So that is her problem. So she was referred to me by one of the uh, clients and when she came to us, we just sat and understood what exactly is her situation, what exactly she wants to do in life. She has a son who is in, uh, who is in the first year of college and uh, the son is also giving her grief. Now she, he's a, uh, he's a teenager, he's also giving her a lot of uh, trouble. So she shared all those things with us and uh, we, we first told her that you relax. This is all the things, one, two, three, four, five, these are all the things that we are going to do for you and we are going to take complete charge of your finances, you don't have to worry. So when, once that was established, it was clarity and peace of mind from her point of view and then she relaxed. And now she's a client, I think she's a client for life. As far as she is concerned, it is not returns which is the most important thing. As far as she is concerned, it is that clarity and peace of mind and the fact that there is an advisor behind her who is going to take charge of everything. We, are, we have taken charge of the reins, so to speak. So for a lot of clients, it is better structured portfolio, better tax efficiency, right choice of products, better goal alignment. So that is the value we are uh, uh, delivering to uh, clients as advisors. So the second thing is uh, a lot of times uh, clients make uh, mistakes thinking that they are doing the right thing. So we, we find clients all the time having multiple houses in all parts of the country, running here and there, not able to manage, uh, getting that managed through brokers, getting that managed through some friends and relatives. So all kinds of mistakes people do. vis -vis all the insurance products, all the investment products, everywhere they are uh, making a lot of mistakes. We also uh, take the mantle of an unbiased third party sounding board to clients because we don't have any axe to grind regarding any particular product. I mean we are not really into real estate or insurance or mutual fund or anything else. So we are an unbiased uh, sounding board and we help the clients to understand what is suitable for them and what they should do at what point. So there are a lot of perspectives which are difficult for them to get otherwise which we will provide as an advisor. Now, yeah, so now the third perspective, so look at this, I mean we all earn money after spending about 35 years, really think about it. See, we are, a lot of my clients are earning 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 50 lakhs per year, okay. So over a, over a lifetime, it is probably going to be several crores of rupees. In some cases, it may be 15 crores, 17 crores, 20 crores, it may be huge amount of money. See, these people... They spend a lot of time on everything else, planning picnic, birthday parties, on every damn thing they are able to spend one day deliberating how this should look, how, how is the look and feel, who is the DJ, all these things. But when it comes to investing, they spend 5 to 10 minutes before deciding a product. That's all that gets spent. 
So we have to help them to understand the value of money. So that's extremely important from the uh, client point of view and that is what we try to do with our clients. So once we, once we establish that, the clients are willing to pay the fee. The other thing which we tell is that you are not really paying the fee to me. You are going to pay the fee through, my, through the savings that you get. I'll just take the case of Roshan. In this particular case, what has happened is, and this is representative of almost all the cases that we face. He had something like 15 lakhs in his bank account and he was keeping that for eternity uh, because he felt that uh, 15, 15 lakhs is a nice round amount to keep in the bank in terms of any emergencies. So what we told him is that you just keep maybe 3 to 5 lakhs in the bank account, balance 10, 10 lakh rupees, we will push it into a liquid fund. So we told him what is the kind of savings, what is the kind of return you can get in a say ultra short term fund, that kind of a fund vis-a-vis -vis what you get in a bank account which is about 4%. So that we did, we, look at, we looked at the insurance, there were a lot of blizzard of insurance products which he had, some of which were not really suitable, so we made something paid up. The amount of money that he was actually saving through those things was again in tens of thousands of rupees. So the point is ultimately in the case of Roshan, I'm not, I don't have much time, we actually worked out and we showed it, showed to him how much we are saving. It came to 1.85 lakhs in this particular case. 1.85 lakhs is what he would be saving on a yearly basis. So uh, when, we, when we said that and when we told our fees, he did not have anything to say after that. Yeah, this is, this is a huge problem in our industry. Because in the case of a doctor, in the case of a surgeon, in the case of lawyers, there is something, it, these are all 200, 300 year old professions. So there is a benchmark. If you know you have to go to a heart surgeon, uh, sorry, uh, a cardia, cardiologist, you know that probably you may have to pay 1000 rupees for a consultation, 1500 for a consultation. So there is some benchmark. In our field, what is the benchmark? I mean, uh, they go to a financial planner and some financial planner is saying that uh, they'll charge 10,000 rupees. They come to me, I say 40,000 rupees. Somebody is saying 25,000 rupees. They absolutely don't know what exactly to pay a financial planner at all. So that's the problem which they are facing. So what, that was Bala's dilemma when he came to us. So how do I know that you are charging me the right amount? So how do I measure that? So that is what uh, Bala wanted to know. So what we said is, you just look, you just step outside our industry and see how companies are actually charging their clients. In the case of software, it's a very well-known uh, thing that they charge per manner. So that is that is one concept. Suppose they are charging 1500 per manner and suppose it is 100 manner, so it is 100 into 1500. So it is that that amount. So similarly in the case of teachers, I mean this is this is an example which people understand a lot, teachers. Like I came to know when my son was doing his 12th standard that teachers charge 1500 rupees per hour for science subjects. So if it is 1500, hour, 1500 rupees per hour, and suppose we as planners are spending, let us say, 15, 15 hours or 20 hours, can't we charge the same fee as a teacher? I think we can. When I gave that example to Bala, he was broadly convinced about the whole thing. Then the other thing, altering the frame of reference. So this is my last. Lot of people have maids, lot of people have drivers. In fact, the ladies out here, uh, I got a, uh, I, I got a WhatsApp which said a maid is a calm wali, C-A-L-M, calm, calm wali. Okay, so a uh, maid is a super important person in the life of a lady. Okay, suppose a person pays 5,000 rupees to a maid and that maid is there for 50 years. Most of the maids are going to be there for a very, very long time. They may change in between, but the maid is going to be there. Do I get one more minute? Thank you. So, if a maid is paid a mere 5,000 rupees per month and if the maid is going to be there for 50 years and the maid is going to earn a 5% increase year on year, lo and behold, you will be paying something like 1.37 crores over the lifetime. Time value of money not taken. Now, look at the driver. Driver is again extremely important. I mean, for, for, for people who are driving in Mumbai, and you want to reach your office and uh, you still want to uh, work in the office. So you require a driver. So the driver today charges at least 15,000 or more. So if you have the driver during your working life, 
and assuming again that 5 percent increase, you are going to pay the, your driver 1.3 crores again. So the point at issue is, it's not that people are not paying money, people are paying money. The only thing is for financial advice, people still need to make money, pay money. So for a transactional thing like what the driver does or a maid does, people are willing to pay money. What we are doing is transformational. So I mean we are going to make a world of a difference as far as the client is concerned. I tell people that I will ensure that you drive a Merc or whether you drive a Volvo or whether you drive a Honda City. So it's, it's as important. You may have a driver, you may pay, but what the work I do is what is going to ensure what car you drive. So it's, it's as important as that. So that's, uh, I'm coming to the end of the presentation. Uh, choose the right advisor. This is my message to the client. Choose the right advisor. Implicitly follow their advice. After that, don't keep second guessing. And I keep telling this, we don't argue with those who charge less. They already know what their services are worth. Last message to us, thought for us. We just have to show them why they can't do without, without us. Fee has never been a problem. I can tell you with assurance that fee is never a problem. For those of you who want to talk to me on this particular subject more because I did not have too much time, uh, I'll be very happy to engage with you one to one. Thank you.